to Cooking with Sarah. In this series we're going to be taking a look at the Feed the Beast Magic Farm mod pack, uh, which is kind of right up my alley because I love to cook in real life, I love cooking games, and there is a crap load of cooking you can do in this mod pack. Um, now that strange noise that you're hearing in the background I did not realize until I got it mostly finished that I was building my um, TV kitchen in Dragon Territory. Uh, they shouldn't bother us. I'm in creative right now, I think. <laughs> um, just uh, You can kind of see out the window, though, just as a precaution, since they can break blocks when they're pissed off. I went ahead and just encased the whole little building here in Obsidian. We're not going to see the outside of it. It can be as ugly as I want on the outside. It doesn't matter. Just as long as we don't have a dragon pulling a Kool-Aid man going through the wall. Anyway, I know you're probably eager to get started cooking in Magic Farm, but before we do that, you need to do a little bit of prep work. You're going to have to set up a kitchen. Now, in the beginning, and let me go ahead and get back into first person view, here we go. In the beginning, the, at the very least, shut up dragon. You're going to still need a furnace and a crafting table. And that will let you, you know, cook some of your simpler stuff. It's not going to get you a whole lot of hunger points back, but you will need it to cook some things, and also to make some of your cookware. You'll need a crafting table. Vanilla crafting table works fine. Later on, you'll want to upgrade it probably to the forestry uh, workbench, which, if you remember the Red Power craft or project table, it's a lot like that, except with uh, one cool feature. It remembers the last eight recipes, recipes that you made on it. And if you right click, it will remember them and not forget them. And it will lock them in place and not be overwritten. So you can have one work table that's just dedicated to making a certain thing or a certain set of things. Put all your ingredients down here and off you go. Later on, you're going to need a water source of some kind, and your plain old vanilla infinite water sources will work fine. Uh, you can use an aqueous accumulator, wooden pipe, and a tank. Or, uh, once you start producing vanilla iron in Mind Fantasy, and I'll do a tutorial on that later, you can make yourself a stone sink. And that is very simple. I do not happen to have it up here, but... Stone sink. And it's just six iron, three smooth stone. Does not have to be by a water source. It stays full all the time. Um, I don't have an empty bucket on me. But you'll see. Let me just get some bottles here. Let me get my hot bar back. There we go. Bloop, bloop, bloop. You may consider it a little overpowered, a little cheaty, and not want to use it. That's fine. I totally understand. Whatever. And later on, when you start getting fancy, you might want to add some uh, major appliances, such as, uh, this is the Mine Factory Reloaded Auto Brewer. You might also want to add a glacial precipitator from uh, thermal, thermal Expansion so you can make snow, so you can make smoothies and ice cream and stuff like that. You will also need some storage for your ingredients, and um, I would suggest the bigger the chest, the better. Just go straight to iron chests if you can. I think these are silver. Um, you're going to need to upgrade them, because once you get your farms going, this is not going to be enough room for your ingredients. Eventually, you're going to have to build a storeroom and possibly start crating stuff up. You'll also need a brewing stand eventually. And while there are some herbs, and I'll get into this in another episode, that can substitute for nether wart, you will still need a blaze rod. You may be able to get one with cinder pearl blaze powder. Uh, there may be some way to squish it or use a minium stone to turn it back into a blaze rod. I don't know. Anyway, once you get your kitchen set up, you will need to make some bakeware, or some cookware. Now there's the vanilla stuff here, your bottles, your bucket, your bowl. But the first thing you're going to want to do is to make a juicer. This is the juicer right here. And what the juicer will do, if you put, you can do this in your 2x2 two two crafting grid. Let me go back to survival. Pardon my junky inventory. 
If you put your juicer here, you put any kind of fruit or berry here, you will get juice there. And it will upgrade that fruit or berry from a morsel to an unfulfilling snack, which doesn't sound all that great, but it's still better than, you know, just shoving a handful of berries in your mouth. And to make a juicer, one smooth stone, one stone pressure plate. Very simple. And in the early game, I recommend carrying it with you all the time. When you're out exploring, just pick berries, run them through the juicer. That will keep you alive, trust me. The juicer, strangely enough, can also make things like ketchup. Um, you put a tomato in it instead of a fruit, you get ketchup. You put peanuts in it, you get peanut butter. You put uh, eggs in it, you get mayonnaise. Don't ask me. The next thing, you'll probably have a little bit of smooth stone left over, will be a mortar and pestle. You use that to grind up grains into flour or grind up your spices and herbs and stuff. You can grind up cocoa beans. Mortar and pestle is three smooth stone like a bowl with a stick in the middle of it. Now once you get that, you'll probably have some wood, so you need to make a mixing bowl. A mixing bowl is used in a lot of the salad recipes, um, used in some of the dairy recipes. I think you use it to get butter, but uh, it's very simple also. A lot of the cookware is pretty simple. Exactly like the mortar and pestle, except instead of stone, you use wood planks. Once you get those, you can start making a little bit more nutritious food, but you'll need to, as soon as you can, go clay diving and get yourself and uh, eight lumps of clay, bake them, do not turn them into brick blocks. You'll need to put them in a box like so and get bakeware. And now you can start making some really good food. You can start making some um, stuffed mushrooms and I believe you can make fish sticks with it. Now you notice that none of this stuff requires iron. That's because in your early game vanilla iron is going to be very hard to come by. Um, in fact, unless you get extremely lucky and find iron ingots in loot chests, in spawners, and thomcraft stuff, uh, your only other chance at getting vanilla iron early on is with one of these. I swear to God, I did not cheat this in. It was in a cobweb tree chest. I, I Nobody in a million years is going to believe me, but there it was. That's how I was able to get iron early on in the game. Anyway, your first four iron that you find, the first thing you're going to want to make, if you can, is a bucket. Uh, reason being, you will need a bucket to carry water, so you can do some farming further inland away from a um, water source. You'll also need it to collect water and milk for cooking. If you only find one iron ingot, you need to make you one of these. This is a cutting board. Very simple. Iron, a stick, a plank. The great thing about the cutting board is if you carry it with you, you kill zombies, you take that zombie meat, you take some salt that you mined up, and you get this delicious, nutritious zombie jerky. Mm -mm, good. That will keep you alive until you are able to cook stuff that did not come out of Hannibal Lecter's recipe box. With the rest of your iron you find, you're going to want to make a skillet, which is two iron and a stick, a pot, four iron and a stick, and a saucepan, which is one iron and a stick. This is a full set of cookware. This will allow you to cook any of the foods in the game. And now, how do you store your cookware? Well, you can either use the bibliocraft shelves like so, I mean, you can just throw it in the chest if you want to, whatever. I like to keep it where I can see it, so I can just grab what I need when I need it, put it back when I don't. Once you upgrade to a forestry work table, you could just keep all your cookware right there in the drawers. I like to keep it out, like I said, because I like to be able to see it where it is, but also because, just for the aesthetic factor, it makes your kitchen look like a kitchen when you have your cookware all, you know, lined up on here. And that is it for a basic kitchen. And later on, you know, you want to decorate it, of course. But later on, I will show you how to start get started with some actual cooking. And until then, 
Bon appetit. I will see you next time. Bye-bye, folks.